Alright, thank you for joining me with another Easy Mesh tutorial. I'm Yoyo Crescendo, and I'm going to be showing you how to make two mesh pieces that are seen as separate objects into one piece that you can upload into Second Life as one object. And there's a reason why you would want to do this, and the reason is um, if you have two pieces that are linked together, because Second Life will automatically link them when you try to upload, um, it won't allow you to stretch them um, on all axes individually, so left and right and back and forth and up and down. You can only stretch the whole thing all at once. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First I'm going to use my plane tool to just make some pretty quick objects here. Um, so this time I'm not going to bother with making my grid size different. I'm just going to click three points and then double click and get my grid. Okay, so use the middle mouse wheel to cam around this thing and kind of uh, figure out what I want to do here. So um, I'm going to pretend that I'm making a couple columns. So I'll just draw a few quick circles here. There's one, and I'll do another one on this side like that. Maybe draw a circle in the middle of them. Um, I'm not going to go crazy making these perfect because you know this is just a, a demonstration so uh, okay I made a couple circles there and I'm gonna use this push-pull tool to kinda um, move some of this up you know make a couple columns I'm gonna make them pretty similar to each other there we go and then uh, like I've said in other videos um, I like to use only the white face so I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna actually just reverse face on the parts that are blue, I'm sorry, the gray face. Um, so let me reverse face on that, and I'll do the same thing to the other one. So um, next, I'm going to apply a quick texture to these. I don't really need the work plane, so I just right click it, go to work plane, and delete all. Okay, so now if I select a particular object, and this is going to look funny, but that's okay for demonstration purposes, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to select a texture to put on each one of these so they have something. So um, I'm going to go to import, and then I'm just going to find some texture, some random texture in here. Okay, I'm just going to use this one here. Um, now I'm going to want to put this texture somewhere on my cylinder, so I'll just click it and kind of, you know, drag it up here like this or something okay so that applies the texture to you see that it only applied it to this one little area but that's okay we can texture the whole thing all at once just by clicking on uh, selecting the entire object and then we're going to get our eyedropper tool and select that one piece that got textured and then just click anywhere on the column like i said it's going to look kind of funny um, it's not real great but it is what it is. So now, the next next thing I'm going to do is the same thing to the other one with a different texture. So I'll just go to File, Import, Import another texture, and I'll make sure that it's something that's different. Here, we'll use these rocks. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of click and um, um, drag up and then click another time to get it there. Okay, so now we'll do the same thing. We'll select this other column. Um, like this, and then I'll just copy that texture and apply it to the whole mesh, and you'll see that it got all kinds of messed up, but that's okay. Um, you can actually click and continue to click on this until it fixes itself, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. I've got everything I need here, two columns, two different textures, but you'll notice when we go to export these, we'll go file export as a 3D model. And we're going to make sure that it's a 3DS file. Um, we'll call it um, uh, test mesh. Uh, remember, spaces are bad usually, especially with a 3DS file. So I put an underscore instead of a, a space. So now I'll export this. And if all goes well, you'll notice that we have. Um, uh, we have two materials, two textures, that's right, one camera. Okay, so now we're, we're done with this for now, but I'm just going to minimize it and go to Blender. Um, I was 
just take a second to open. Usually it's pretty quick. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press A a couple times so I can delete all this stuff. Um, and then I'll just import my um, my 3DS file. So I go to File, Import, and then 3DS. And then I'm going to go to the file where I saved it. And then I'm just looking for Test Mesh at this point. Um, QRS Test Mesh, there we go. And we'll import it. And you'll see there's actually four objects. Um, well, we don't want four objects. We want one object. This camera up here, you'll see on the upper right side, we don't need that. We can delete that. It's seeing that as an object, but we still have three objects. So if you right click on one of these columns, you'll notice that I can move this column individually, um, which is no good. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click that column and then we're going to hold down shift and click this column. Now remember when you're in Blender you have to click with the right mouse wheel to or right mouse button to select something. And at that point we have two of them selected. The other one is this funky little dot here and that'll never show so we're not even going to worry about that. What we're looking for up here at the top is two objects because that funky little dot just kind of holds its shape for you. So next I'm going to just simply, once one is yellow and one is red and they're both selected, we hit Control and J. And that will join them both together. You'll notice that now they're both yellow. And if I were to right click on just one of these objects, um, they, they're both selected. And if I try to move them, it will move both of them at the same time. Okay, so there it is. Um, we've joined these two objects, and now when you bring these objects into Second Life as um, meshes, you won't have to worry about having issues where, where you have to stretch the whole object all at once. You can literally stretch from left to right and um, backwards and forward. And the reason I use the texture method that I use instead of painting the texture on in Blender, just so you know, is so that you can use your existing textures that you have in Second Life to, um, or textures that you bring in to uh, um, basically paint your objects without having the hassle of trying to map everything. It's just so much easier that way for people to use. Um, so on my next tutorial, I'm probably going to be making a window for the house. I, I hope that you all look forward to um, watching that tutorial. It should be pretty interesting and a little bit more um, intricate than some of the stuff I've been doing. So anyways, my name is uh, Yo-Yo Crescendo um, I'm with Easy Mesh, and I hope that uh, you enjoy my videos. And oh, I left out one thing real quickly. If you go to File Export to um, bring it into Second Life, you're going to want to export it as this Collada file. It's a D AE file. Um, it's very important that you do that because that's the only type of file that um, Second Life will see as a mesh object. So anyways, um, thank you all for watching. Please make sure to like my videos and subscribe.